Six and fresh from Friday's at Times testing news conference, Sabina Mato steps back into public view, campaigning over the weekend in East Providence, where council members say they never signed her forms, and side by side with her old pal, the governor, today. The Mato's campaign for Congress making the best of it after a disaster of a week. Hello again, everyone. I'm Gene Valicenti. Good to have you with us tonight. I'm Patrice Wood. But now, the I-Team has uncovered more nomination signatures submitted for Matos that are suspect tonight. The I-Team's Brian Crandall is here after questioning Matos and the governor more today. Brian? Patrice and Jean Matos Friday evening blamed a vendor, a one woman company for submitting suspected phony nomination signatures on her campaign's behalf. Names of dead people and others who say they didn't sign them in Jamestown, Newport and East Providence, including city councilors there, as we just mentioned. And today we found more turned in in Providence. Angling for some positive news now, Lieutenant Governor Sabina Matos attends an event with Governor Dan McKee. Do you think your explanation is going to carry weight with voters or some of your opponents are saying you just didn't take accountability? Uh, you were there. You heard me when I said that I'm very regretful that that incident that was done um, on the name of my campaign uh, had caused voters to have any doubts in the democratic process. And I do take responsibility for that. But at the end of the day, I was trying to figure out what was going on. Certainly, she recognized that uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a problem. That she recognized that. And, um, I, you know, people know that vendors are not always the most reliable and the most honest. Matos hired Holly McLaren to collect signatures. Her campaign admits they didn't vet her, saying she had a good reputation. McLaren, as we reported last week, appeared in McKee ads last year and worked on his campaign. Do you know who she is? Have you ever met um, her? We met, uh, I met last year during the campaign. Um, yes, so I, I met her last year. But I had nothing to, to give me any indication that I should be concerned about her work or what she does. Are you surprised to hear this by some of the people who were involved in your this campaign? This is the last one we're going to do on this topic. Yeah, so I, I, I am surprised. Has there been any review within your campaign based on what's now unfolding because there are some of the same people involved? Uh, no, not really. I think that's, uh, you know, we, we ran a good campaign, and an honest one. I talked on the phone today with two more people who tell me they never signed Mato's nomination forms, though their names and those of their spouses appear on forms submitted in Providence by McLaren and Shana Gallagher, the two women who submitted suspicious signatures in other communities. We've tried, but have not been able to reach either one of them. I'm very much interested as to find out what happened because I, I, it doesn't make any sense. The Attorney General's office, as we've reported, is taking the lead on the ongoing investigation. And despite the fiasco, Matos will be on the ballot for the primary in the congressional race. I'm Brian Crandall, NBC10 News. Hi, everyone. It's Mark Searles from NBC10. Thanks for checking out the NBC10 WJAR YouTube channel. Click the links on your screen for more stories from across southern New England. And don't forget, hit the subscribe button below and get notified anytime we post an update on YouTube. As always, thank you for turning to 10.